typically I start off with a tidy little recap of what the New York Knickerbockers have been up to. But if you don't know that the New York Knicks are winners of nine straight and closed out the month of January, 14 and two best record in a month since 1994, half a game out of the two seed in the Eastern conference. If you don't know that the dirty ass Miami heat low bridge, my man Julius and dislocated his shoulder but he's already rehabbing. He'll be all right after the All-Star break. Fingers crossed. Get well soon, Jew. If you don't know that the big ra ragu is out here looking like sous chef curry and cooking all comers in Randall's absence, if you don't know that Jalen Brunson is firmly in the MVP conversation and the sweet sounds yes. of R&B are now officially NBA All-Stars, if you don't know that OG has missed the last three games, but it doesn't matter. Because we got Josh Triple Double Heart, Young Deuce is on the loose, Pogo Jericho, Isaiah Blockenstein, and my precious. If you don't know about these New York Knicks, and I don't know what rock you're living under, but wake the fuck up. Our time is now. Let's fucking go, Knicks. It's an exciting time. These are heady times for the Knicks, man. I'm so excited. Um, you know, after last night's game, I was all pumped up. We were texting, obviously. And, um, you know, that Jalen's uh, little conversation with Alan Hahn after the game was just amazing. Um, you know, uh, just uh, two times when I just got so amped when um, when Blockenstein did that follow um, dunk and just screamed under the basket. I was just losing my mind right there. And also, too, Precious Satura when he – obviously, you see, I, I see that um, Hartenstein clearly has a connection with the other big men. You know, he works with them, obviously. They work together all the time. And he clearly – you could see him having that connection with Mitch. And now he's getting that connection with Precious. And I got to say, Precious has really come up, man. He's been very uh, – a pleasant surprise in this trade, really. Listen, Precious is it, okay? I said Precious ain't it a few pods ago. Did say. I, I, this is the second pod in a row where I got to eat some humble pie and, 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 and issue an apology for a previous stance, but I couldn't be happier to do it. Precious, man, he's all over the place. He is, he's, he's getting, I mean, the rebounding is, is it's just crazy how we continue to, no matter who we put in that five, four spot, they, they continue to just dominate the boards, especially on the offensive end. I mean, Precious last night, he had 12 big rebounds, eight on the offensive glass. And then the defense against Siakam late. Siakam had a really good start to the game, but in the fourth quarter, he had two amazing plays. Uh, you know, uh, the Precious Hive, you know, I I'm trying to join, you know, where do I, how do I get entry? I, I love this guy. I love the way he's got, like, he's only 24 years old too, man. Yo, and yeah. you gotta, yeah. you gotta give props to Leon Rose, you know, I mean, I, there's probably a few different times to, you know, during this pod that we could probably say that, but this is as good a time as ever because he was supposed to be a throw in and look what he's doing. That Brunson post game interview, mm. yo, I was watching that man and I was like, yo, if he cries, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do anything Jalen does. No, I was like, you know, I'm starting to get a little, you know, emotional watching him. And then you could see how it was how the garden serenading him was, you know, really just sinking in and. I was like, yo, I, I think if he drops a tear, I might drop one too. And and the Garden don't usually stay after like that. The fact that they stay mm -hmm. after to give him his due, so awesome, man. Well, I mean, just what a time. Yeah, no, it's a great time, man. I, I will honestly say, uh, I think I've mentioned on this podcast before that I used I was a um, Knicks season ticket holder for 15 years in, a, in another life way back when. Uh, I must admit, at one point last night, I was like, man, I kind of wish I was a season ticket holder now because, I mean, that garden, that's the first time, Nick. I never felt that way in watching those Carmelo teams. I love Carmelo. You know that. But in watching those Carmelo teams, I never felt like the garden was alive like it was when I was at all those games with my buddies from the floor through the 90s, you know, all of the 90s and the early 2000s. And so it was, I mean, what I was watching on TV was exactly like that and, and more maybe, you know? I mean, wow, this team is really, really exciting and precious. I tell you what, what, what we're seeing out of precious out of the big men, clearly, I don't know, there's probably one coach who works with the big men. Clearly, though, whoever's working with them, you know, there's a uniformity to, to what they do. 
And that's because they're all being coached the same way I think, you know, they, 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 they go about their business the same way and they go about it in a, in a hard way every night. So, you know, I want to give a shout out to the, to the coaching staff because clearly they're doing what needs to be done. You know, the, the culture, the way we play is just fantastic. And uh, everybody's coming in and no one wants to let the team down. That's obvious. And give my man Deuce. Well, you gave him Deuce uh, some love at the start, but shh, Deuce came up big last night. Big. Hey, Deuce, Deuce looked nice last night. I'm going to talk about him a little bit, but I want to talk about something that you just touched on, which was the atmosphere in the garden. A couple notes from that. So I, I, I was very envious because um, a friend of mine, uh, Emma Bossert, you know her, Kyle Bossert. I played a middle school bo basketball with him. You might remember him. Mm -hmm. But she shares all of our sports allegiances. She's a huge, huge Mets fan. But she was in the garden last night. She posted pictures. Mm -hmm. And I was like, damn, yo. I, you know, I got I got back there last year. Um, I saw us lose to the Bucks. I got I, I, you know. I was watching that last night. And I was like, I got to find my way to the garden sometime here in these next couple of months, man. I got to make it happen. But um, the other thing about the crowd last night, I thought this was a, a cool story from Alan, Alan Hahn today. He was talking about the fact that on his Apple Watch, it gives him an alert if he is in a place where the noise is so loud that it could be damaging to his hearing. He said that it had not given him that alert not once this entire season, and it gave wow. it to him four times last night. Wow. Look so that. that's some tangible, you know, real life evidence of yeah. how the garden was rocking. I mean, it it was so, so cool to watch. And just like explaining to my kids the fact that, you know, when you go see a game, at, when you go see the Suns, they have somebody screaming like, you know, through the loudspeaker defense in the garden. They're just playing the organ and that's the crowd doing that. And it's still louder than you is other places. Like it's just, it's been, it was so cool. Breen with the iconic call, Jalen Brunson born to play basketball. Oh, yo, I was so hyped when Breen put that out there and, I, and the resiliency in the fourth, it was just amazing. This entire team mm -hmm. has taken on the personality of Brunson. As we've talked about many times before, when you got that head coach and that that star number one player on your team and they have, you know, some synergy and how they look at the game and approach every day. It just totally permeates throughout the rest of the team. And that's what we're seeing with Brunson and this entire squad. And it's just, it's just a joy. I thought of um, a comparison and this isn't about, as you know, Carmelo bashing, but we always used to talk about, you know, who's the leader on the team and whatnot and how they take the personality. The rest of the team has to follow the leader. And, Brunson, by just way of the way he plays and the way he carries himself on the court, makes the rest of the team go hard. And it, it's it's impressive, man. You really do see how this young man is a leader, you know, and he's such a leader on that team. And I would like to think he'll be a leader on this team for many years to come. So, you know, I mean, this this is these are the best of times right now, for at least, you know, since the 70s. Um, well, no, since the 90s, because the 90s was still better because we went further. But who knows how far we go this year? So we'll see, right? We could usurp all of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, the, the sky's the limit at this point, especially if we can get healthy uh, by the end of the season. If we can get, you know, some Julius and some, and some Robinson both healthy by the end of the season, I really, really feel you know, very optimistic about what we possibly could do. The thing about Brunson, and this I thought was a great point um, that I heard made by Tim Legler today on his podcast. He was saying how when you have somebody on your team who is so great under pressure, it takes more pressure off of the other guys. The other guys mm -hmm. just feel like, you know, hey, we're going to be all right. And like at the end of the game... How many Knicks teams have we seen that it gets so oh. frantic at the end of the game and we end up doing some bullshit where we don't even get off a shot or something like that or get some terrible shot? And with this team, you know with Brunson that he is going to get himself or somebody else a decent shot most of the time. Yeah. And whatever shot he gets up uh, at whatever angle he gets it up, it's 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 probably going down. And I'm telling you, I don't know. they the, the, the These cats around the league, they need to, you know, put out a memo or something, stop talking shit to this guy. Stop yeah. talking shit to this guy and stop talking shit to this team. Because this is like two nights in a row where, you know, you had that guy Sexton. He he, he wants to, he wants to, the the, the little bull, um, he wants oh, to get, he wants wow. to get, uh, you know, he calls himself young bull. But at one point in the game, Clyde called him little bull. 
I hope Clyde okay. said that shit on purpose. Um, <laughs> but uh, nah, man. So he tries to get, you know, tries to get a little aggressive with Brunson, get all up in his face. And Brunson is not bothered. Nothing bothers him. But no. what I loved was Dante was bothered. Dante right. didn't like that shit. And Dante made mm-hmm. sure that he busted his ass and made sure that he knew about it afterwards and was looking at their bench and talking shit. These dudes are boys, man. Been boys for damn near a decade at this point. And I love how we have a mentality now that it's like, yo, if you come in with that, all right, all right, all right, we'll, we'll see. And then Halliburton last night, he wanted to get right. a little bit extra spicy. First of all, if you want a minute restriction, you should you should be on a shit-talking restriction, too. If you're not going <laughs> to be in the game at the end of the game, shut, shut up. I don't, don't want to hear nothing from you because you're not going to be in the game when it gets decided. No, but I don't understand. Why wouldn't they make his minute restriction and keep him in the last game for the last five minutes? I mean – I just don't understand why they would work it that way, but that doesn't make, sound very bright to me, but I'm sure there's a reason. I mean, Rick Carlisle is a very good coach. You know, he has to have had to have given that consideration, but what, he didn't play for the entire fourth quarter, did he? No, I listen, I absolutely. I'm good with him not playing, but I just think it's foolish. I don't understand why you wouldn't distribute it where, yes, he gets to finish the game. I don't understand how you don't do that. But also the other thing that doesn't make a lot of sense for me is – I get like a, and like a hamstring is something that is, you know, touch and go. Tyrese Halliburton looked great last night. He didn't look like he was tired. He didn't look like his hammy was tight. He's getting out on the brink and dunking on cats, hitting fadeaway step back threes. I'm sorry, but like, I know you got a minutes restriction. This is a game against an Eastern Conference foe. You're going into the fourth quarter with a lead. That win is important. You know, I would hope that there is some flexibility around that minutes restriction if I'm a Pacers fan, but I'm not. And like I said, I was happy with him being out. I heard somebody say today, the first thing they said was, oh, well, Tyrese Halliburton missed. I don't want to hear that shit because, you know, (laughs) what about two of our three best players who didn't touch the floor? And the the other thing I like to see was, you know, OB. First of all, I'm glad that we didn't do like the full, like, you know, rolling out the carpet for the, he didn't, you know, they didn't deserve quite all that, but they gave him some nice cheers and he had some OB type plays that play where he gets it, runs out in front, dunks it. But towards like, you know, first of all, he's not on the floor in crunch time. Second of all, there was one play where he tried some scoop shit and I think it was precious. Just hard. No, hard. hard. Oh yeah, yeah, it was hard. 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 Just like, just just like, like he was his little brother or something. I love that shit. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it was awesome. Obi, you know, listen, good to see him back. You're right. No no tribute necessary. Um, and the whole thing about, oh, if Halliburton had played the fifth, uh, fourth quarter, you know, I love the saying, if ifs or fifths, we'd all be drunk. You know, so it's just stupid. Come on, I, you know, come on. It, it didn't work out that way. And if, if Julius had played and, and like you say, OG. But um, listen, man, this team is ready. They're coming hard every night. They're playing – they're playing a, sm- a smart game of basketball. They don't panic when they're down, especially why would you in the NBA where, let's face it, a 20-point lead really doesn't mean anything unless they're leading by 20, would say, less than five minutes. And now I don't panic when they're down either. That's the other right. thing. That when I yep. thought they were down 15, I was like, yo, eh, we'll be all right. Well, you know, no, I know we're not going to give up. We're not going to give up. No, they're not going to give up. And I was thinking to myself that, you know what, man, maybe this is just one of those nights because let's. We're going to have a game. We won, we won nine, ten in a row. We're going to have a game where we play like shit. But I was thinking early last night that was the case. But we kept edging back and then close. But the thing is, because this team has been so good, now I find myself, like you say, I, I'm not panicking. I'm not, I'm not stressing. I, I think it's going to work out in the end. And it does. And it has. Um, so, I mean, this must be what it's like when you have, like, you know, teams that win. I mean, a lot of games in the season, more than 50 or, you know, 50 some odd games. So listen, man, like you said, the sky's the limit. I I have to tell you, Nick, and this may be talking crazy. I I don't know that I really want to make any trades right now. Uh, Any trades. If it's a trade, if it's, first of all, the, the, the. The overall chemistry is so good right now that you feel like you don't want to change it. But we also just added a couple of players, and it seems like it added to our chemistry. So you got to right. trust in Leon no matter what with that. But my thing is, is that if we're making a trade right now, it's got to be a Fournier plus uh, maybe a first and a second at the most for, right. for a player back. If it's anything where we're shipping out anybody, unless it's uh, – because you can't change the starting lineup. 
DiVincenzo's first. No. He's no. Played, he's There's played no one. way I'm taking DiVincenzo out of the starting lineup. Him exactly. along, along Brunson. They're too good. they got to stay together. They play well, too, together. I mean, the guy has just really stepped up in Julius's absence. He's had, what, 20, 33, and 28 in the last three mm-hmm. games? Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. also played very, very good defense, both one-on-one and off the ball. Love what he's doing. And, yeah, I mean, you know, we were able to pull that game out yesterday at the end. But the refs tried their best to fucking take the game away from us. It was a very badly officiated game the entire game, Dad. It was the badly officiated the entire game. Brunson's getting slapped in the face all game, all game. He's getting pissed off at the refs. And that play where they got the where, – where Brunson got punched in the face and then went down, and they pick it up and dunk the ball to be back up by one point after we had come back and finally pushed over that threshold and got in the lead. There's so many – I mean – Dad, how many times have we seen in when we're watching basketball where a guy gets hit like that and the ref doesn't necessarily notice it, but he knows he gets hit, guy hits the ground. Brunson may sometimes like, you know, he's not a flopper. He's not a guy who's going to roll around on the ground because if he didn't actually get hit. And mm. for them to just let that play continue to play out, where also the other thing is right there, if you may go ahead and make that call and it's the wrong call, Indiana can challenge. Mm-hmm. To be able to get, but if there's no call made, you can't challenge. They should be, they, the, the refs should be trained to do that, just like the football refs let the plays play out at the end. It's kind of the opposite, right. but the same. Um, right. And I mean, the guy goes down. That's just call the late whistle and go ahead and make the call. But you know what? It doesn't matter because this guy, he's just got so much moxie and just comes right back, goes straight through the contact and one when he started yelling at the crowd right after that. I mean, I was losing my mind, screaming expletives like he was at, you know, the the MSG crowd, though I was doing it for 2,500 miles away. And um, in addition to that, when 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 Precious, man, that, 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 when he was walking and screaming directly at Hartenstein. That was so, awesome. Awesome. It was like he, like, I mean, he was pumped and he didn't know what to do. And like Hartenstein started screaming at him, so he just started screaming back at him. I, I made that a sticker. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be sending that to you whenever Precious does that, um, does something for the foreseeable future. Yeah, no, I mean, come on, man. That game, that game last night had so many highlights. I mean, just it was fantastic, man. And I, I mean, talk about tough play. Listen, now we have tomorrow night to look forward to against uh, the Lakers. You know, LeBron and AD are coming back for that. Well, AD, we're, we're never sure, but LeBron, I think, is coming back for that. I, know, I mean, AD, I think, will be back if he's healthy enough. I just don't. I think his injury right. is more serious than LeBron's. I, I, that's what I think. I don't know. Right. But um, it's going to be a tough game. I mean, you know, and listen, man, it's going to be a tough game, but I obviously feel we can win. And um, you know, I don't know. What more can I say? Precious, precious, precious. I mean, yeah. Come on. The guy's awesome. He's awesome. He's awesome. Um, it'll be, I think if OG plays, I think we win by 15 plus. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I just, he, it's, and him, this whole elbow thing, I, I, the first time, the first night that he missed mm. the game, it was like, oh, he just aggravated it right before the game. You know, no big deal. It's a first night of a back-to-back. Then he's out. Then he's out again. And it's like, yo, what's going on with this elbow? Uh, you know, I hope it's not that big of a deal. You know, I, we, we, we need it. We need him back in the lineup, like, you know, ASAP. Yeah, no, it concerns me. You know, you hope these things don't linger. Hey, I know, <clears throat> I know you're very optimistic about Randall and all that. I find it a little concerning that, um, no one's, I've, I've not heard anyone say an actual, I mean, they say oh, he has a separated shoulder and, um, he started rehab and they're going to reevaluate in two weeks. That sort of scares me. I, I'd much rather be hearing, we believe he'll be back in two weeks or three weeks or whatever. I don't want to, in two weeks, I don't want to hear, you know, I, I'm i just nervous. That's all I'm saying. See, I'm I, nervous I don't, about what to do. I don't interpret it like that at all. I interpret it like reevaluating two to three weeks is, is that best case scenario, he could be back in two to three weeks. Worst case scenario, in two to three weeks, then, you know, we're going to say, <clears> all right, <throat> hey. Let's, it's going to be another two weeks. So I, I think that, right. that, to me, that's what reevaluated two to three weeks seems like. I, I pretty much everybody other than Ian Begley in the media is, they're, they're, they're reporting on it optimistically. And I definitely, I, I trust in the, in the, in the, in the Shams and the, and the Woges, you know, the most. They seem to be the guys who always, you know, get it first and get it right. So I, I'm, I'm not worried about Julius. And also the other thing is, I've seen like a lot of stuff, like he was at some, 
function with his kid the other day. His, his arm's not in any sort of sling or anything like that. Like, you know, he's... Mm. he's I, Listen, man, and he's Julius, man. That, that motherfucker's a rock. He's just gonna, he'll be all right. Julius might be back. Hey, Tibbs the other day called him actually. He actually at one point said day to day. Uh, there's a chance that Julius might run out of the tunnel on Saturday. There's a chance. Who knows? You never oh, know what this guy. On. Never Thank know. You. Let's go. <laughs> nah, two to three yeah, weeks, okay. man. Julius, take it easy till after the All Star break. We'll hold it down, then come back. The Miami Heat need to be investigated. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm saying it's, it, it, it's not just the Knicks either, but the there's like you can pull up a highlight reel of Miami Heat players hurting the Knicks. Julius Randle has been hurt by them three different times. Twice it's been significant injuries. They need to be investigated. That was absolutely a low like Brunson takes all the charges he ever takes, but he never takes a charge like that. It's always more so and a thing where he takes a charge against a guy who's on the ground. You know what I mean? Like before they're in the air. So to be <clears> that <throat> far up under the basket. Slide in that late, and especially in the I, well, the time and the juncture of the game. I that's I listen. I don't expect he's got to turn it on and off, depending on that. So I can't get too mad about that. I did see pe some people making that point, but that's a low bridge, man. If you did that shit, in the, do that shit to me in the park. I'm getting up and punching you in the face. Now I know that people take charges and shit a lot more in you know the NBA, but I did think that that was not just borderline. I thought it was dirty. Well, I, I didn't. I didn't necessarily see it that way, but I didn't. You know, run the reel over and over like 17 times like you did. I just watched it the one time and I kept it moving. Um, you know, listen, Miami plays, clearly plays to the edge of, um, you know, sometimes. And sometimes that's good. Sometimes that that's the way Riley used to coach the Knicks. Sometimes it's not. <clears throat> the Knicks play tough now. They don't play to the edge quite as much no. as they did, say, in the 90s. And clearly, that's Pat, that's Pat Riley's way of teaching, okay? So, you know, it, it's not out of the realm of possibility that this guy went over the edge right there because they constantly go right up to it. And honestly, seeing how hard the Knicks play and how well they play defensively, clearly, that's not necessary. You don't have to play that well right. to play that way right. to be that good defensively. I think that he, Pat Riley, made that a mandate of the way to play with the Knicks back in the day because... To be very frank, in the '90s, we didn't have that very athletic a team. Oh, no, so he was just like talent. We had right, it. but now we have talent, mm -hmm. and I don't know if he needs to be doing that in Miami or not. I don't know, but now we have talent, and we don't need to be doing that sort of thing, you know. And we don't, and it's it's a better well. We couldn't play that way now. You 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 foul out in four minutes, so right. you know, it's just a different game. Right. Great to see that Julius also got the All Star nod. Um, yes. It, to me, I would I would have been really annoyed if he didn't get voted to the All-Star game because with the injury, basically, you know that you can give him his flowers as well right. as go ahead and get somebody else a spot. And he exactly. just absolutely deserved it. Um, a fantastic year, playing his best basketball when he went down. Once again, Drew, please get well soon. Uh, I, this, I thought this was interesting. I had to tell you this. Um, I was talking to Mill Media on Twitter. She uh, she is a longtime Nick fan, and um, she also runs uh, BKE, which is Big Nick Energy, which is um, very very popular, very huge in the uh, in the Nick's Twitterverse. And she was talking about the fact that she used to run a a, a Lance Thomas um, <laughs> a fan page back in the day. So she's like, you know, like so don't don't, don't nobody come to me and ask me about like you know me me and my Nick fandom because I used to run like a Lance Thomas fan page. And I had to comment on it. I was like, I was a Rick Brunson stan. All right. Like that a lot. That's one of the things, like for some reason, when I was a kid, whoever like the backup point guard that was like the victory cigar to put into the game, whether it be Brunson or um um well, Scotty Brooks, I always liked those players when I was growing up. And Brunson was one of my guys. So the fact that he his son is now, I mean, it's amazing. Geez. One of my two or three favorite Knicks of all time at this point. It's just, it's, it's so, so, so cool. Did you see Tibbs' post game interview? That he's not that was, Knicks. Yeah. Yeah. And he was just saying how he used to make us all laugh because he would imitate all the players on the team and imitate mm -hmm. their moves when he was six years old. I thought that was hilarious. That was great. Very cool. Very cool. And hey, when it comes to Julius, you know, we got to go ahead and start calling him a perennial all star. All -Star. That's what three. he is. He's at three all star now. What? It's three um, of his last four. Three of his last four. All of them have been with the Knicks. Yeah, Julius Randle is a perennial all-star. That is, you know, that is what it is. 
Uh, your right. boy Deuce, like you said, 16 big points yesterday. 46% from three for the entire season. And yesterday, he's dribbling and going to the hole and finishing on Gats. Mm -hmm. Yo, mm -hmm. Deuce. And once again, Leon Rose, we knew we had him. We knew we had him waiting in the wings. He, he, uh, last night, I was watching the game, and I was like, quick, who? Oh, wow. That's a lot coming from you, especially being Mr. Quick. But I – um. I, I love Deuce, and I, I like his energy. I love his defense. And um, listen, man, this guy brings it every night. You know, it, it's not always perfect, but he's going to bring it. And it, it's just a question of how it's going to work out. So I like what Deuce brings. Um, like I said, Nick, I, I don't want to bring in some, like, Malcolm Brogdon guy, and now Deuce is nailed to the bench. We don't see him no more. I, I know. Hold on. Hold on. I know that the one right doesn't now. No, but are you saying that right this second, right now, that if we could trade Evan Fournier and a first for Brogdon, you would do it or no? I don't know if I do it, Nick, because now who whose minutes is Brogdon going to take? Let them figure that shit out, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. But let them figure it out. But let's us figure it out. And let's us obviously opine on it. I think that I don't want to stifle Deuce right now. And frankly, I don't want to stifle Grimes. Okay, he's been playing better too. So one of those guys is going to be the odd man out if you bring somebody else in. I don't want to bring in a DeJounte Murray because he can't be coming off the bench. So now Dante's got to go back to the bench. I don't want that. No, I'm out on I'm out on DeJounte. I'm out on DeJounte. I don't want that. I, I don't I, I definitely don't want this clown um, Clarkson who was on the who was Oh playing. hell no. No, no, no. He did something the other night, Nick, when they were down by a bunch. When I'm watching that game, again, they were down by a bunch against the Knicks. And I know you were at Noel's practice, but and you watched it later, but he just came down and took a shot from like eight feet behind the three-point line for no reason. And they were down by like, well, uh, but there was time left. Listen, on, I think that Tibbs was probably in Leon Rose's office saying, hey, get me OG. I think he's probably in Leon Rose's office saying, keep that fucking guy away from here. Oh, my it's God. Just, they're just not, they're not, they're not. Tibbs or Knicks type players. That's not not but, serious people. And we have a we have a certain way that we carry ourselves on the court, and it's from top to bottom. And either well, listen, maybe if you got here, you would you would tighten it up, you would switch it up pretty quick. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't. Yeah, I, I'm good on Clarkson. Um, you know, I, I'd rather just rock with the guys that we have right now. I love what I've seen out of Josh Hart recently. Just mm -hmm. just doing it all. I love him as the initiator on the second unit. I think that that's part of what you see with Deuce and what mm -hmm. some of the things he's been able to do is the fact that he's had him as the initiator. I think that lets Deuce play off the ball a little bit more. Um, yeah. And then yeah. um, also the other, I mean, Hartenstein, he just continues to be a warrior. 12 points, 19 goals, six assists as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Playing fantastic basketball. You can see that he's still not 100% right physically, but he, you know, continues to give his all. Yeah, that as, as you mentioned earlier, that tap dunk that he had late was was, was huge and was just uh, was just one of those, like, you know, stand up uh, off your couch type of moments. Well, I know that, um, so there's this, uh, which I don't fully understand the different levels and luxury tax and all that foolishness with the NBA, but... I have to say, man, if I'm Leon Rose and I'm talking to, um, what's the owner's name? Dolan. Dolan. I'm talking to Dolan. I, I, I feel like keeping around, if you can get them on some sort of, not friendly deal, but if you could somehow keep him and Mitchell, you know, and, and go over, that's a reason to go over is my point. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those guys are that good. Now, I heard somebody say uh, when I was driving home yesterday, somebody talking to, um, you know, talking on the radio, say that, you know, Mitchell Robinson is trade bait now. And I'm like, I, I, let's slow down. Let's slow down. The ideal situation is Mitchell Robinson comes back and him and Hartenstein man that position. And then now uh, Achua really ends up becoming a legitimate backup to um, Julius. And then sometimes when you want to go straight NASCAR, you just let him play center with alongside Julius. You know, I there's so many possibilities. It's endless. And, you know, uh, let's go with the guys we got. It's my feel. Yeah, your boy Sims. Sims has played well when he plays. Good. He's been getting some black shot, block shots. And he showed the other night that he's got a bit of a bag that I didn't know ab about against Utah when he does, like, the dribble oh, out, spin back reversed, and two hands from the baseline. Bang, off, yo.
Well, listen, Sims is starting to play well. He's, you know, mm -hmm. getting those 12 to 15 minutes a game, and he's being impactful when he's in the game. I love that about him. We've talked about Tibbs. We've given him love. He won Coach of the Month. Jalen Brunson should have won Player of the Month. It's insane that he didn't. Who won Player of the Month? Donovan Mitchell won Player of the Month. And check this out. I saw this the other day. Donovan Mitchell won Player of the Month. Jalen Brunson he averaged more points, more assists, fewer turnovers, played in more games, had a higher field goal percentage, had a higher three-point percentage, free throw percentage, and had a higher plus-minus. What are we doing? What are we doing here? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, come on. Well, you know, whatever. doesn't matter. Uh, the New York faithful will make sure that Brunson gets his due in other ways. But yeah, Tibbs, Coach of the Month. Tibbs has done a fantastic job. The ability of the coaching staff, as you mentioned earlier, to coach up these centers. And Precious, who looked a little bit lost at the beginning, and now he knows exactly where he's supposed to be. He's very That's one thing he's very good at. His, his defensive rotations and getting there mm -hmm. early, he's very good at that. And he's been you know, getting all the rebounds as well. He, he's looked fantastic here recently. Loving what I'm seeing out of um, um, Precious on the defensive end. And just, you know, Tibbs, his personality now is the personality of this team. Yes. We have a certain identity and a certain way that we play, and it's definitely a callback to the Knicks of, you know, yesteryear. And it's just, you know, all, all, all Rose, Tibbs, Brunson, that's the triumphant right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, we have to be very happy with what we see. And um, I, I love the fact that our bigs are so athletic right now you know i can remember a time when the knicks never had athletic bigs they were just constantly like you know you know clod hoppers or whatever but they now, can all switch to your switch out onto your perimeter exactly. player exactly and i tell you what soon speaking about that nick crowd which obviously we know so well that crowd last night single-handedly squeezed uh the, the, a couple of those uh pacers guards okay mm -hmm. at the end of the game when it was getting tight the crowd was into it the defense was pressuring them up not just that they missed those layups but clearly you know the the moment the the the, the situation got to those guys man and and you know it, it does make a difference okay and what i also see is that like okay think about brunson right brunson when he was with the when he was with the um, Mavericks, and he was killing it that year in the playoffs. Now, that crowd, obviously, it's Dallas. They were into it, and they were pumping him up. He was having huge games in the playoffs. He was never as pumped as he was last night in the Nick game. Not even close. Never. Precious Achua, the way he's acting now, you know, after he makes big plays, that's because that crowd and that team are behind him. This is all, you know, it's just a vibe within the team now, and the crowd is feeding off it, and the crowd is feeding the team. It's just fantastic to see. And as you know, when the Knicks are are, are good, uh, you know New York loses its fucking mind. It's not. It's mm -hmm. unlike. It's unlike any of the other sports. Obviously, football is a huge deal, but like, and you know, New York is a huge baseball city. But it's unlike any other sport when it comes mm -hmm. to how they react when the Knicks are relevant and you know they're playing the way that they've been playing. The Knicks currently right now sit at eighteen and five at home. So. We're, you know, taking care of home court, absolutely dominating. Embiid, I don't know exactly what his injury situation Bad. is. Bad. If he ends up being down for a little while, we could distance ourselves from the third seed. And the Bucks, they look like they're primed for the picking, too. So, uh, you know, that yeah. two seed yeah. is only half a game away. And we could be doing talking about next week the fact that, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty far ahead in the two seed. So um, see how that all works. Shout out once again to my man, Big Perk. You heard it here first. We were talking about how he's been giving the Knicks some love. And recently, Knicks Twitter has just totally adopted him. We love Big Perk. He's a general in the Knicks nation. And um, yeah, Stephen A., you weren't with us on the come up. You, you know, you weren't here when Leon was initiating and, you know, playing out the process. So you weren't here then. Stay over there now. We don't want you. He's all hype. I watched him this morning. He's all hype about the Knicks. He's all hype about the Knicks. Man, two weeks ago, you couldn't stop talking about what we weren't. So keep that energy. We don't need you, Stephen A. We don't need you. He's going to be at the Garden tomorrow night for Knicks Lakers. And, you know, he I, he's going to have to uh, he's going to have to graft for a little bit longer before I go ahead and just, you know, open him back, open, you know, open him, welcome him back with open arms.
You know you're going to welcome Stephen A. back, please. Stop it already. I mean, come on, man. I mean, look, Stephen A., he's a bit of a front runner for the Knicks, but you know what, man? Honestly, Nick, I've known a lot of Nick fans the same way, you know, because I don't know. Some people, they don't want to jump in with both feet because if things go wrong, they don't want to feel like the rug got pulled out from under them. Well, guess what? It's called being a fan, so grow up. Yeah, you know? exactly, exactly. But, you know, hey, let's continue to look forward. Interesting to see what happens this Saturday against LeBron and the Lakers. I have heard it floated today. I think Stephen A. started it, and I've heard a couple other people talk about mm. LeBron to the Knicks. I don't, I don't even want him. I don't even want him. No, no, no. <laughs> well, really you know, that, that what's his name? The agent came out and said it's not happening. Um, he came out and he said, um, what's his agent's name? Maverick Carter? Yeah. Um, he, said, he came out and he said that um, LeBron is not being traded. LeBron is not going to request, request a trade. Yeah, out. I mean, I, I don't see. And I, I wouldn't want him either, Nick. I don't honestly, um, they, it was like so. Basically, you'd be sending um, Fournier and some p number one picks and say Julius out to get LeBron back. And I'm like, oh no, 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 no. That's not what I saw. What I saw was just yeah, picks. That's what I heard. I, I, yeah, oh, I that's what I just I picks. Julius My thing is, is that there'd I be think no that... sense in having them both on the same team. No, it'd be, well, yeah, I hear you. I, I, I just, I don't care. There's so many reasons. I don't think he fits on the current squad. I don't want the ball in Brunson's hands less. I don't want less defensive OG on the floor, all those things. And I don't want to win with him. I want to win with these guys. You know, yeah. and that's the thing is that we have a lot of guys now that they're not all homegrown. They're not guys that we necessarily drafted, but they're yeah, home. But they're our guys. They're homemade. They're not mm -hmm. homegrown, but they're homemade. They're guys who came mm -hmm. here and okay. then leveled up as Knicks. And so, yeah, I don't want any of them. Forget them. It's, it's, we, we got it, man. You know, listen, man. It's just New York basketball, man. I'm, I'm so hyped. I can't, I can't wait. It's like I woke up this morning, like, quickly. And the first thing I thought about when I woke up this morning was like, Ah, the Knicks. Like I wanted to like get on. I was like, yo, I need to who's talking about the Knicks right now? I I I need to I need to I need to devour all the content. But yeah, man, it, it, it's good times. Orange and blue skies. Let's go, Knicks. Let's go, Knicks. Absolutely.